Hello! All right, let's see if this is working. Good evening, everyone. Let's see who's in the room at the moment. Darius, Jace, Longil. Hey, good to see ya. Uh, Love like Semtex. Hey, dude. Uh, Pixel Outlaw, Rinko. Yo. Let's do this. Am I, uh, is the audio and video okay? If it is, I'll start yelling about code and we'll uh, get on with the share. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Jace. Okay, so we are switching gears slightly and we are going to look at Boyd's today. So I'm going to throw a few links at you, which I'm going to be using. Uh, let's have a look. So it's about implementing flocking behavior. So we're going to have a few entities just kind of pretending to have some kind of flocking. So like shoals of fish or flocks of birds or whatever. Um, right, so if I... So this is the Wikipedia article and we'll jump back to this in a second. Um, and I've got two other articles, which I just realized I'm going to have to bring up on my other machine as well. Um, now, neither of these are particularly great, and I'm going to go through why in a minute, but that's what I'm roughly going to be basing everything off. Okay, so let's... So from beer, good plan, good plan. All right, oh, let me uh, bring back the doohickey so I can see how the stream's doing. Yes, there we are. Okay, and now I've got to bring up the same crap on mine. Uh, what have we got? We've got to start a browser for a start. This is the kind of preparation that everyone really wants to see. Uh, so what was that? The uh, three symbol rules of flocking. And then there was voids. Yeah, see you do code. Pseudo. Pseudo code. And that was Conrad Parker article. And the Wikipedia article. Wikipedia. Voids. It's not how you spell that, but you know. We'll make do. Okay, so the idea is we're going to simulate flocking. And what's nice about this is there's three very simple rules. We can see pictures down. There's hand side over here um, of what you have to do. So you you find some neighbors. So you pick a distance and within every, every other void within that area is a neighbor. What you're going to do is you're going to try and move away from them. That's called the separation step. So in general, you're moving away. Uh, you're trying to, at the same time, align yourself, so travel in, on average, the same uh, same direction. Hey, Pondipim, good to see you, man. And you're giving us the uh, audio video okay? But you are too late. It has been done. Um, and then we have cohesion, which is in general, it means you're just trying to turn into the center of the group. And if you watch birds flocking or fish, things like this, you've got this constant pattern playing out all the time. The getting into the center is like the center is the safest place to be. Uh, but you also don't want to crash into each other, so you're trying to steer away. Um, and that partly is separation and partly making sure you're not flying against the flow. So um, these three simple rules are what we're going to try and implement. And um, yeah, we'll just see what happens. Now, the two articles I picked, well, these are the ones I found. I was surprised, actually. There's not many good tutorials on the 3D boards. At least I didn't find them that easily. Um, so I've got this one which is talking about the pseudocode. But what's slightly strange is the Wikipedia article talks about separation, alignment, and cohesion in terms of direction. So you're steering um, towards the average heading of local flock mates and things like this. Now, this article talks about um, like center of mass, that's fine. But when it talks about alignment, it's talking, trying to match the velocity. So I, I think that's not exactly right. I want to stick with alignment. Um, this other one here does use alignment, uh, but it's based around 2D kind of behaviors. And there's a rather, um, there's a couple of strange bits in this when I was looking through parts like this, where they take some vector, it doesn't matter what it is right now, this is velocity. And then they scale both components by, some, by the same number and then normalize. So this is shrinking, like scaling the vector down and then they normalize it. So it has, there's no point doing this if you're gonna normalize straight after, unless I've gone mad. So there's some oddness to this code, but it's also very clean and it's nice to read. And so we're gonna steal a little bit from this and a little bit from the other one. Um, I had to read through them before to find these little issues because I got bitten by the other paper. Never again. Um, and yeah, we'll just see what we come up with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick start. And uh, we'll see where this goes. But uh, as usual, shout and chat away in the in the chat room because it's what it's there for. All right, I'm gonna make another file for this because I think we're gonna have quite a bit of code in there. 
Um, what was the package name again? It's just play with thoughts. Cool. And instead of ground, we're going to have, oops, ground? No. See that I haven't got any better at typing since last time. We're going to need an object for voids. It's going to be a kind of thing. For those who haven't joined us before, sorry, I should I should say a few things. Um, there's a project called Play With Verts that's on my uh, GitHub Revo thing, account, site, doodad. Um, and the um, master branch of there is where I kind of base each week off. It's just a couple of helpers, sets up a basic 3D environment with a really shitty fong shading. And we just we just go from there each week when we're when we're tinkering around. So that's all I'm going to do. I've branched off. Uh, there's a branch called ep episode 14. So if you want to follow along at home, you may. But I'm not going to make an effort to um, kind of work all together. I'm just going to code and we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so we have... We're going to have a void and I want them to be cones because, you know, that's how, that's how they, drew, they draw them in the pictures as triangles. So we're going to use cones. Um, it's going to have a certain size, so let's define a variable for that. Def are, uh, boy, let's do length. Wow. Um, and we'll say it's one for now. We can mess with this later. And we're going to need a function for cone. So I'm going to go and make another helper in here. This is just going to take a second. We'll take the cylinder one. And let's just... Call it cone, and instead we're going to use Nineveh. Instead of making a cylinder GPU arrays, we're going to make cone GPU arrays. And that'll do. So this should now be defined. So I'm going to say the radius is half of the length. So times void length 0.5, and the height of it is going to be the void length. Wow. There we go. So each one we make will have that. Um, we're going to use, we should really have a different texture for this, but I can't be bothered right now. We'll deal with that a little later. Unless I have something already there. What have we got knocking around? Um, <laughs> Hescore, good word. Not sure how you're pronouncing that, but I'm down. Let's, uh, let's find a terrible texture. No, let's not say crap tiling texture because then we're just going to get a square shit. Um, free tiling texture thing. Let's see the f find the grossest one we can. These are all too practical. Something. Oh yeah, big pile of shitty money. Does that even tile? <laughs> Maybe. It doesn't look like it tiles very well. Oh well, whatever. This will do. Uh, save image as. Play overts. By the way, the usual rule is if you want something to look better, it's you guys can supply the texture. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick really bad ones. Um, <laughs> Make sure you get some corn in there. Yeah. We just got pizzas everywhere. <laughs> Pizza tile. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, it's come full circle. Ooh, I'm going to have to click links now. But I'm distracted. Right, uh, let's see if this works first. What do we, I've forgotten already what I called that file. Is it really just black? It was. Good. And if anyone is, is new here, wants me to explain anything, because this is just generally hanging out and screwing around with Lisp and graphics, but I'm happy to step back and explain stuff. A few of the guys here have been around for some of the talks, some of the videos where I've explained Keppel and all that kind of stuff. It's fine for us to go back. Yell if you want that to happen. Okay, so that loaded fine. So we're good. Um, what shall I do with this? Let's make an instance of the void. Let's just do that. Our, uh, boy is make void. That's not how you spell void. I'm going to be saying this word to a sick of it. Um, and I actually want a variable that's just going to store all the voids. So we can screw around with them later. We already have a variable called things, which is all the, the objects that are going to get, the update is going to get called on every frame. This is our update method for our void right now. Um, let's, so we're going to need to push uh, the void onto things, and we need to push uh, the void, the void, the void, void, right, onto uh, voids. Ugh, words. 
Oh yeah, I'm gonna want to return to it, because you know. We'll probably want that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna be making a bunch of these, so let's give them random positions. So let's go set up the position of the void to be random. We need a nicer we need uh, functions for creating random vectors because we do this enough that we really should be yeah, doing that. What's the size of the ground anyway? Let's have a look. The ground is 40 by 40 apparently. So let's do, um, yeah, let's put them within that. So it's, um, yeah, random 40 and it'll be centered. So it's going to be minus 20 from that. Uh, minus 20. So that will give us numbers from minus 20 to plus 20. Why do we need that many spaces? I don't know. Um, oh yeah, and I actually don't want it to go minus 20 underneath. I'll have it from 0 to... Let's just do 0 to 30. Or oh, 0 to 20, rather. Okay, so this should make a void. Let's uh, make void and see what we get. Something crashed! Cool, right. Uh, no applicable method when called with a void. All right, because I haven't compiled this function yet. And if we say continue, there should have been one there. Where is it? Oh, there's one. Okay, so the one just appeared there. I guess the other one's out of our field of view for some reason. That looks outside of the 40 as well. Hmm. We'll see what I did. Oh, no, there it is. Cool. So let's make a few of these. So blue for I below. I don't know. 30 to make void. There we go, there's a few of them. So this is going to be our first little flock. Um, pixel out your... Uh, uh, I can't even say your names! Pixel out law. Yeah, random unit vectors are nice in processing. Good point. Actually, I should just go on a troll through processing because they've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. That and the... Because, um, you know, I should be stealing good ideas. Let's see what's going on in chat. Entry add, what's a void? It's a, what is actually the definition of it? I just think of it as one of these agents that follows these set of rules. It's an artificial life program created by Craig Reynolds in 1986. Oh, right, so that's pseudocode that we were looking at before. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll do this on the right computer because it's, I'm jumping between things and let's have a look. <laughs> right. Here we go, boys. Did you, um, I, I threw a few of these links in the chat. If you came in later, I can throw them in chat again. I'm not sure how far you can scroll back on Twitch um, when it's actually playing, when we're actually streaming. Um, so yeah, it's these, um, the idea is we wanna make something like this. These are boys, these, these little um, agents which follow a few simple rules and end up moving like Shoals of fish or flocks of birds. It's a kind of generic flocking algorithm. Um, and it's quite easy to add extra rules to. Created originally on the Symbolics Lisp machine. No shit. I had no idea. Really? It doesn't even say that in this article. I didn't know that. That's fucking cool, man. Uh, Barad. Hey, Barad, when did you arrive, man? Good to see you. I still haven't sent you um, the... Oh, what's it? Okay, there's a few things I haven't done that I was meant to be doing. I was meant to be sending you some Mendel files, which I will um, I will do. I've got to open another browse tab. And uh, Pom de Pimp, um, I was also meant to set up a Patreon, which I haven't done. But that's also open in a, br in a browser window on my other machine. I will, I will do this! STL files. Yes, you're right. The thing, the thing. I will get that done. Um... I am a master of this capitalist organization. It's all going so well. Right, okay, so. Let us get back to the thing. So we've got some uh, voids knocking around now and we're gonna have to make some rules. So in this update uh, function, we're gonna make a, we're gonna call a load of things which do the rules we need, these ones. So let's. Let's put these down here. And let's, no, um, how do we do this? There's a nice, oh, okay. 
There we go. Um, thing for laying this out. Okay, that'll do. So the first thing we're going to need, we're talking about local flock mates. The idea is each Boyd is going to look in its local neighborhood. Oh, I've got a doodler, haven't I? Let's see if I can do this. So each Boyd is going to define itself a little radius, and anything within that radius is going to be considered a neighbor, and it's going to apply these rules to its neighbors. Uh, we're not going to worry about doing this in an efficient way, we're just going to do it. So let's get the neighbors. Let's do it in American speak. Uh, neighbors is get neighbors for the, let's change things to Boyd. Get neighbors for this void. Um, this function will define down here. So we're going to let's just loop for uh, b and voids, and then when the we're going to want the length between. Actually, no, we have a function this haven't we? We've got distance between two points. So the position of B and the position of the Boyd um, is less than some distance, which we call the neighbor distance. And we'll say for now that's three. Um, then we'll collect it. Collect B. Get neighbors. Fine. Um, what are we going to do next? Then we will. Well, we're going to have to call the rules, aren't we? So um, let's call it. And each one's going to return a direction. So we'll do direction zero is. Um, what's the first rule? Separates. Separation. So separation, uh, void, dt, um, and actually we won't worry about delta time yet, and the neighbors. So now we're going to define this function. Separation between the void and the neighbors. So steer to avoid local flock mates. So from the picture over here, separation, we're going to find the vector between here and here, here and here, between all the neighbors and us, add them together, and that should give us a vector that's pointing roughly away from us. We'll normalize that, and that will be our separation vector. So we go loop for, we could do this as a reduce actually. Hmm. Let's um, do B000, zero, zero, zero. and then we'll do reduce, and we'll do this in a destructive way, because it'll, like if we're doing this on everyone, we're gonna be allocating new vectors all the time, and I really can't be bothered to do that, so we are gonna call V3, and the, the dash N means it's gonna be non-consing, so non-allocating or destructive, depending on which terminology you prefer. Um, we are going to, how are we gonna do this? Hmm. We actually wanna sum these together. Okay, let's make a little helper function. Um, actually, ah, that's great. Uh, let's use loop. It's one of these times where it's just gonna be cleaner. A B in neighbors do, um, and then we want to, get the vector between them and us, so pointing towards us. Let's just do a quick doodle to make sure I know what I'm talking about. So that's X and Y, and we want this one. Um, so if this is, this is, say this is going down, like minus five, so it'll be this one, sorry, X minus Y is gonna give us this vector. So if we want it to us, then, Cos of void minus the position of B. Is gonna give us, yeah, it's gonna give us that vector, hopefully. And then we'll just add this to our accumulated version over here. So we'll do V3 and we'll do this in a non-destructive way for now. Um, minus N plus D. Right, so that's going to sum all those together, and then we are going to average it. So 
V3 minus N again, times the scalar, so we're going to scale this down. It's the direction. Actually, no, we're not going to scale it, we're just going to normalize it. V3 minus N, normalize direction. Okay, so that's the first rule. Hey, Elevate Simulator's here. Hey, man, how you doing? Um, <laughs> this was one weakness when you want to iterate. There's a million ways to do it. There are. Um, I kind of wish our uh, integration, like our iteration was a bit more closure-like. I really like the choices they have um, in some of those. Oh, I've got to scroll back. Oh, cool pixel art lore about the uh, trails. That's kind of groovy. Um... <laughs> Barrett, erosion. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing erosion today. Um... Entropy add, not shaders. Oh, well. Uh, you mean shaders for doing the Boyd stuff? We could move the logic into shaders, but I'm not going to be doing enough of them right now to, to worry about that. Um... Oh, nice. The link uh, bombed up... Oh no, who was it? Jace put up. Was Oh, this is cool. Sorry, I'm just getting distracted about the history of Boyds now. Must not. We are going to finish something tonight. Rather than me just having to do five episodes of stuff. Um, yeah, right. And on that note, I should actually do what I'm saying. Well, this actually make a nice little dock string. So let's put that there. Cool, next thing we're going to do is alignment. So direction one is going to be alignment. Void and neighbors, that's fine. Um, let's go take this and make a function. So how does this work? I guess what we're going to do is just find the average of all the neighbors. Well, there's one thing I just realized that's really dumb. Um, if we go through all the boids and checking the distance, that also includes the boid we're currently looking for the neighbors of, right? So this is all of them. So we need to make sure that we're not B. So and um, not equal B and void. There we go. Okay, so alignment, void, neighbors. So yeah, we're gonna, just going to take all the neighbors and sum them together. All the... Ah, so we actually need a velocity vector because we don't have those in our um, objects right now. So let's add that. So velocity, init form, 0, 0, 0. Or we'll just say 1. I don't know. What should we do? Doesn't matter, I suppose. And the accessor is going to be Vel. I don't think it's anything else for us to do. By recompiling that class, we've updated all the ones that already exist. So that's fine. We should be good to go. And we can even check that if we go and inspect voids. We can go and look at them and see that they all have a velocity slot now, which is cool, with a vector. Ace. So, down in alignment again, we want to sum all of the things. So, <laughs> sum all the things! Minus n um, plus, and it's, the sequence is neighbors, and the initial value is zero. That should add them all together. Um, and then we're going to want to, yeah, average them. So average is, um, how do we do this? V3, let's just do divide by S and sum, which means we're going to have to do is let star because we want to use this in here. And it's the length of the neighbors. And then we're going to normalize, whoops, B3. Normalize the average. Um, wait a second, if we're doing, if we're just scaling by the number of 
things. Wait a second. We don't need to scale by a constant if we're going to normalize. So let's just not do that. Sounds a little dodgy. We'll see. Oh yeah, void is never used. So let's declare ignore void. Okay. So that could be alignment. I'm not 100% on that one, but we will come back to it if there's a problem. We've got plenty of time. And cohesion. Um, steer to move towards the average position, center of mass of local flock mates. That's cool. Um... <laughs> Chimera has just arrived and says, I'm late and I have no idea what the fuck this is, but I'm going to make a wager and say it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Well, I am not going to disappoint you. <laughs> because you're already disappointed, for that is your nature. It's good to see you, man. Um, thank you for bringing the misery. Your bot's not been in either, which is fucking useless, so it means we're going to only recorded half of the chat log. Failure. Alright, what's going on over here? Damn people. Why do I let you in? Um... I've misspelled strength. Good chance of it. Where? <laughs> oh well, it's somewhere else now. If I'm not looking at it right now, it's probably fine. Um... <laughs> Shin Marvin. Um... Oh dear. Right. Well, the rage continues over there. Let's uh, let's knock this around. Yeah. So Shin, we're just we're just fucking around with uh, doing voids. That's that's all it is tonight. Something that should be simple, so I can actually finish uh, finish something. Pro puke. Hey, baggers, I'm new here. Good to see you, dude. Thanks for coming down. Are you a common lispy kind of person, or from the outer realms of the Peren world? Um, do I have a wizard's hat and cape to go with that beard? No, no one sent me one. It's disgusting. I grew this beard and nothing. Young Lena, hey, how you doing? Hey, Tycholine's arrived. Excellent. We have a bot. <laughs> New people. Damn right. I tried to pump this a little over at the uh, Slat the Lisp Discord channel, which has not many inhabitants, even even for Lisp groups. Okay, so what the fuck am I doing now? Um, oh yeah, cohesion, cohesion, cohesion. So we need the average position. Um, Devon uh, cohesion. I'm still remember. Interesting where I've got that misspelling, but never mind. Void and neighbors. We are just going to sum up all the positions and average them, so we can actually borrow most of this code. But this is wrong. I just realized that. Dumbass. Let's go fix this. Um, Q, B. This will be velocity, and we'll do this. This time we're doing position. This will all crash soon and we can fix it, but sketch out roughly what the code should look like. Um, yeah, we'll sum together all the positions and then we're going to average them. So v3 minus n divided by s sum and the length of the neighbors. Cool. Right. So that should be the average position. Um, and now what we want to do with this. So 
we want to steer towards it so that's the uh what is it oh yeah just the the inverse of this take the average position subtract our position and that will give us a vector from us to the average position that should be right if not we'll fix it easy peasy right deleting unreachable code the type of length neighbors is wrong okay for some reason i require a float and that that's fine done cool okay Direction two is cohesion. All right, so that should be the three rules. And then what did the pseudocode roughly say to do? Let's see when you've got the rules. And they've got stuff about limiting the speed. Ah, right. This is actually the original. Holy shit. Because, um, well, it's by Comrade anyway, who was, I think, the guy who was doing it. Um, Bounding the position, limiting the speed. Ah, okay, fair enough, that makes sense. It's interesting that Wikipedia talks about direction rather than velocity, and their, their, their main guy who did it was interested in velocity. Oh well. Um, where was the... Uh, last thing? Oh yeah, before further tweaks. Okay, so he was just applying each of these one after the other. That's fair enough. This version, however, explains the rules. So you have alignment and cohesion and separation and all that jazz. And then putting it all together, they just sum everything up um, and then normalize, which is a little odd. Um, that's the new velocity, apparently. It's... I think we should uh, sum them up and then divide by the delta time so it doesn't go completely crazy. Uh, so let's just do that. Sum is vector 3 plus dear 0, dear 1, dear 2. We'll scale this by delta time um, and that will give us a velocity to add to our current one. So v3 increment the velocity of the void by some and then what else do we need to do? oh yeah we need to change the position so increment the position of the void by um, the velocity of the void also multiplied by delta time what next is there anything I'm forgetting? Yeah, we'll see soon enough anyway. Let's see what crashes first. Okay, so we've got some, oh, brilliant. So we've got divide by zero already. My good old friend. So first off, what was the problem here? Uh, drive type of, this is, not what it wants, apparently. <laughs> so, what's it worked out the problem is? Oh yeah, this multiply here isn't going to work at all. Um, so that's the start. We've got not a number straight away, so we've got some division in here that it's not liking. Apparently the length of the neighbors is not. That's actually entirely likely because when we do the update... Okay, right, so we don't, we don't need to run any of these rules if you've got no neighbors. There's no change. So... Let's bring that back here and just say when neighbors. And we'll uh, just go to the REPL and reset. So 
continue, and that gets rid of everything. And something's moving. A couple of them are moving anyway. That's interesting. Not very well. Not in a sensible way. But damn it, a couple of them are moving. Oh well. So we'll see how that goes in a minute. Oh shit, you are especially caustic this evening. Uh, elevator simulator. Shouldn't the void itself be part of the average? What if there are no neighbors? Um, yeah, that's a good point. We could have done that. I like the idea of like, otherwise you're kind of aligning towards yourself. I suppose that's not going to cause a problem and um, it just feels odd. Um, <laughs> okay now we're in now we're into how fucking gender works in language and i'm just like i i i, I can't handle language with the genders ever and norwegian has it it makes it really hard to remember anything spoiled by english in that regard not that that isn't a fucking insane language as well but okay so we've got some shiz working. Let's. Ah, okay. Give us a second while I just have a look at some stuff. Uh, a few years ago, I think it was like 2013. Jesus, yeah, it's a while ago. Um, but I keep on, I keep on distracting myself with things to learn and not actually getting the Norwegian learning done, which is <sighs> deeply embarrassing. But it is what it is. Oh shit! I'm clicking on, typing on the wrong computer again. Yes, I have not lost it. I am still messing this up. Let's have a look. Okay, separation. I'm interested in why the other guys are completely static. I guess they've got nothing in range. I, that would be that would be a good enough reason. If we uh, up this to ten, maybe they'll maybe they'll wake up. Nope. Let's add a few more neighbors and just see what happens. Interesting. Oh, I know what's going on. I think. We don't clear this list when we do a reset. Okay, one second. Play with it. Reset needs to set up voids to now. There we go. Now we loop. What's interesting is that still, I don't know, there is at least Something going on there. Very strange. Ah, we'll work it out soon. Let's just give him a little kick as well. Something to get him started. interested in why they're that static also the moving away suggests i've got something backwards there's also probably some scaling issues that i might want to look at to the contributions between the different points but oh, i'm not sure yet
<laughs> Farouk says, did you move a fuse or was it something that happened off? No, I moved a fuse. I, well, I went over to um to see a friend. Uh, we were just going to be doing some... I knew him from making games way back. And yeah, it was just to hang out and play with Unity and stuff. And then I yeah, got chatting with the guys. Who were, he was working at um, Outtrax, which was before Fuse, same company. Um, yeah, and I just got invited to come over. It was one of those, hey, can you move her in three months? Sure. That was great. Fucking awesome. Um, for next week, could you implement Anytime D star for me? What's Anytime D star? Is this another, like, an A star kind of pathfinding algorithm? Because. Actually, I would like to do some pathfinding stuff at some point. Not sure how good a stream it'll make, but um, yeah. <laughs> you can keep your Swedish as well. Right. Um... Oh yeah, the uh, cones aren't... Let's just do that first. Let's uh, align the cones to the direction they're meant to be going as well. So let's... Um, we can do that in the update. Set a rotation of the void to be... Um, what is it going to be? Uh, quaternion from a direction. And then we'll just use an up will be 0, 1, 0. And this will be the velocity of the void. Um... Yeah, they're just and not doing. Oh, wait a second. Um, if they're that's probably ninety degrees off, because these guys seem to be coming towards us, but are still facing up. Let's uh, Q times Q from axis angle. And radians. From, let's just do minus 90 degrees. Oh. I'm a little bit surprised then. Should have seen some difference, damn it. What's going on here? Oh, you're so stupid. I'm not doing it in update. There we go. That looks like it's facing the wrong way. Okay, now they're pointing in the direction they're traveling. Let's reset. Okay, yeah, so they're now at least moving, pointing in some direction. And the cohesion seems to be working. The alignment, but they don't have the... Um, I don't know, actually. Something a little odd going on there. I think I'm just not subtracting some vector somewhere. Let's go through this a little more sensibly. Um, separation. So we're going to go through... And we're going to get all the, accumulate all the directions from them to us. I think that's right. Let's just, again, doodle to make sure I haven't got this backwards. This is B. Is that a B? What was that? Writing game still on point. Boyd. And say this was 5 and this was 10 and we want this which is going to be minus 5 then it's 10 minus oh sorry 5 minus 10 to give us the minus 5 and so that will be void minus b and that's what we've got here position of void position of b so that subtraction is correct we're accumulating all of those together which will give us a oops which will give us a vector pointing away, and then we normalize it. That should get us something. Um, yeah. No, I think that one's all right. Then alignment. I might change this reduce into a into a loop just so I can. It's a little easier. Oh wait, have I missed something out here? Steer towards the average heading of the local flock notes. So. That needs to be the difference between 
my velocity and their velocity, surely. Um, let's have a think about that. So then we do want an average of this. If we take the average and then normalize to diff and t3 um, minus velocity of void. And they're accelerating a well away there as well, which is kind of interesting. Do I not normalize the velocity afterwards? I guess I don't. Um, maybe I'll do that. Because I swear in this one, yeah, they normalize it to a given speed after they do all the summing. So when they set the velocity, they actually clamp it, which is which is interesting. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I'd say I'm not 100% sure of these instructions in general. They, they feel a bit weird, but... Um, <laughs> okay, there's that. Um, let's take this off for now and... <laughs> Bloody hell. Neighbors are going forever. Fair enough. Um, let's have a look. Hmm. So the alignment one, I'm gonna get, I just wanna, I really wanna get this alignment thing worked out in my head. See what's going on over here as well. So yeah, we're gonna take all the neighbors, sum up all their velocities. And average them. Yeah, that makes sense. And then subtract our. Oh, wait! Oh, fucking idiot. There we go. I mean, those ones are still very wrong, but that can't have been helping. Hmm, we'll see about that soon. Just want to see what's going on down here. Is there any movement or are they just... Oh, I forgot about that terrible texture. Oh, that just makes me happy. That is disgusting. Also look like the um, texture coordinates were weird on those cones. Might have to go file an issue for that. Right, and cohesion. Steer towards the average position. So let's look at this pseudo code again for the cohesion. Where was it? Yeah, there you go. So the center is out of all the positions and divide by divide by n, which is this. Divide by n. Just the length of the neighbors, which is fine. And then, um, then what to do? So he has this wafty scaling factor because it's not based on, um, on delta time. But still. So find the center of all the neighbors and we just want to steer towards that. So it's going to be our position. Yeah. Average position minus our position. That should give us the direction to that point. Hmm. Oh, but that could be very small. 
So we could normalize that at least. Oh yeah, and that's uh, V3, normalize. <laughs> normalize is still undefined. Thank you, Saki computer. One second, what's going on here? Oh, just, ah, oh, I see, I'm using the wrong, using the wrong thing. That's strange. I would have expected more from that. Interesting. Separation, alignment, cohesion. Multiply by delta time. Increment the velocity with the sum. And then increment the position by the velocity. Hmm. That's all right, we'll go through this slowly in a minute. Let's just see what the... <laughs> Alignment should just be the total um, average velocity. Once you add the steering vectors together, you can compare that with your current velocity. Um, okay. Interesting. I had some note down here. I was like, trying out having uh, some things like just another screen over here, and I know you can't, guys can't see that, but it was just see if it can help me out. Also wondering if I screwed up something with that. Uh, that um my brain's gone blank screwed up something with the reduce i'm tempted just to uh rewrite this as a simple loop just in case i've messed something up here let's do that shouldn't make any difference but we have time for once we actually have time um Loop for B in neighbors to B3 um, ink sum by velocity of B. So I guess we could see what kind of values are coming out of this. Just a rough thing to make sure we're getting something. Yep, they're not completely tiny. So we'd expect some kind of thing. They're not huge either, of course, but it doesn't seem mad. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, it's normalized. So of course they're a, they're a standard length. Let's, hmm. Oh man. Okay. Voids try to keep a small distance away from other objects, including other voids. Okay. Um, okay, so this, this is a weird one. He just like doubles the distance between any nearby void. So if a distance is less than something, um, then position minus uh, the void position. This is the current void is this bj and b is an abram void so just subtract that difference um or add the other difference i guess it doesn't really make any difference there um and that was separation so we go through these and to each one, I'm just going to change the terminology here. Increment this direction vector by the difference between the two. So even if, if that was 
the other way around, they would, you would ex still expect something. Um, I'm kind of just surprised on the absence of <laughs> activity, actually. Let's set the neighbor different distance to be higher. Like there's gotta just there's, there's a there has to be like a shit ton of neighbors at this point. I'm kind of uh, kind of confused by that. I know somebody's definitely getting it. Um. Okay. And this proportion here with the DT, yeah, there's a good chance I'm doing something, doing something slightly wrong here. Oh, we've been <laughs> we're missing some stuff here. Sorry, Jace, I, I've, I've been missing what you're saying. I'm just going to try and find up. Um, what I've always understood is you're calculating three directions you want to move in, taking a weighted average, and then using that to update your current direction. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so what am I doing instead? We got our three directions. We're summing them. And then, I mean, we can't just add them straight to our velocity. Um, I mean, we could just set our direction to be that, but that seems a bit weird. Like, we can set up the velocity of the boy to be um, the sum. Again, like, how is that little going on? That's just weird to me. It's almost like those ones aren't getting updated, but they've got to be. You know? Voids, and then just... Let's just make sure everything is actually getting updated. Voids. Uh, is there's 60 of them and the length of things which should be 61 because we've got the ground as well okay so they, they are getting cooled ah oh, of course yeah i know b3 And I guess one is very low velocity, so maybe it's just the velocity is really low. Let's um, let's scale it up, see what happens. I just want to see some activity that makes sure I've not gone crazy about these bloody things. Oh, got a problem there. Uh, okay. Oh, of course, yeah. Why well, do I don't get the feeling that? Oh no, it's still running. That is not how you type. Okay, that seems odd. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning in your direction of just there's something, something funky with this weighted averagey stuff now. What the blaze is going on? It all seemed so easy a few minutes ago. Where are we? Oh, we're only an hour in. We'll have this done before the end. I know it's something simple. Tell you what, I'm just going to go grab a coffee. So I'm going to put you people on pause for a second. And uh, we'll get back and I'll actually look carefully at what Jace is saying. And yeah, find out what's up. Right, back in a minute.
All right, break over, back to business. Increase the distance limit, love by Santa. Hmm. One thing we haven't done with distance though is separation. That might be what you're, if that's what you're talking about, definitely, definitely that. Like, separation is about keeping a certain distance away from other elements. So, one second, let's have a look at this. Um, right, this is only valid. We only want to increment this if the distance is less than something. Uh, when less, yes, distance, pass B and pass void, and it's less than some separation distance. Then do the thing. We need to set this variable to be. Let's just do that for now. I must lower this a bit, just in case that's being a bit weird. Let's recompile all that and then reset can do all of this now we've still got a certain percentage of them that are doing jack and we've got some ones that are just flapping out um, it's interesting and because they had some kind of a somebody mentioned the waiting factor I'm gonna um, set up some weights here so we can uh, actually let's do this on the when we're summing them just so we can start tweaking those values as well and see what we get 1f0 right so no changes there Fine. I really feel like this should have, because you can't just, um, right, I'm not okay with that being the, the thing, and I'm really sure that this should have some kind of delta time component, because otherwise you're adding, oh, okay. Well, that was a bit more interesting. There's still some ones buggering off to the horizon. But there's a couple there that are actually doing some kind of behavior. But all these static ones just blow my mind. I, I would expect like them to be unstable or flipping out or something. But to have nothing is just really weird for B in voids to Print velocity of B. Yeah, a load of them are just zero. Straight up, zero. How is that happening? Right, let's let's make sure that they can't all be zero. I just want to uh, start doing insane things just to get some to get some behavior at all. Okay. Here it's getting set. Oops. Where's the other one? 120 of them. And some of those are twitching around down there in a really weird fashion. Um, How are they getting how are they getting to zero? And I don't think it's just the delta well, it wasn't just the delta sign thing because we could remove that. So there's something something stupid going on here. Oh yeah, seeing as I refactored this to be a loop, let's do the same down here. Just covering dumb bases.
oh, and suddenly a load more have started moving. That was odd. <laughs> and they're all, they're all heading off in a different direction now. See, a couple of these are flocking together as in like they're... They turn around after a bit. See these guys just turning around there, going back down. But again, a lot of them are still not moving at all. Very strange. Could be, again, the neighborhood distance could be too low. We can set that up to 15. Nothing happens. Let's try each of the components. Maybe, like, um... So, let's start with cohesion. This should bring them all together. So if that isn't working, then we're not getting cohesion. Um, let's reset. Right. A load of them. No problem. Coming in and just tumbling straight into the center. And they're heading off. What's interesting is they're heading around. They seem to be tumbling around zero rather than around their local groups. So let's just check that the way we're collecting the neighbors is correct for a start. So for B and Boyd's, if not equal B and Boyd, fine. And the distance between them is less than the neighborhood distance, then collect that one. Yeah, so that looks that does look sensible. And when there are neighbors, we're going to do these things. Um, how many times aren't there neighbors? Like. really <laughs> dumb way of doing that but um, but strange yeah I'm not sure what I was going for there. Oh, come on. What am I doing? Yeah, so it's plenty of them that don't think they have neighbors at all. That's kind of interesting. How is that screwing up? Because I can set the neighborhood distance to 100, right? And then, well, fuck it, set it to 1,000. Like, every everything here is within that distance. There is something really fucky going on here. Oh! What the hell? I'm an idiot! God damn it, I know what this is. I've been using def var and not def parameter, which means when I'm recompiling, it only sets the value the first time. God damn, there they go. That was a stupid reason for it not to work. Okay, separation distance. So there's a load of other questions still to go, but that's the first goddamn thing. And now I'm gonna go and look at the chat and find that people have been screaming at that at me for the last five minutes. So this is just with cohesion, right? Which is wrong. I mean, the zero, zero shouldn't be the center of that group. So it looks like cohesion is implemented incorrectly. Um, I'm not using OBS scenes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. I am definitely using OBS scenes. Um,
Shouldn't some be added to Velvoid and update? Uh, let's have a look. Velvoid. Oops. It's, uh, it is. Oh yeah, sorry. And then <laughs> I need to read like two chat messages down and you realize I do. Okay, uh, wrap the edge of the cube. I could do that. Um, what I'm worried about is if it goes, if some of the boards go off one side, they're going to affect the boards on the other. And so like, I just think the behavior will be a little strange. Um, we'll see about that though. Um, Can't believe that bloody Death Var thing. I love I love it for some stuff, but it's really dumb when I'm hacking away like this. Um, yeah. Longel, there's a uh, is there a slime command for resetting Death Vars? I believe there is. I think if you do it from the from the REPL itself, it might work, but um, not if you're just recompiling in code. Actually, it is the right thing to use a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, just me being a muppet. Okay, so why are they all going down to zero, zero? Why? What is wrong with you? Ah, that, that'll come up soon. Right, so the first thing, cohesion. Cohesion is wrong. It's gotta be. And because cohesion is meant to be about positions, not about velocities. That's the first problem. So now they should all form little groups. Yes, that's what cohesion should look like. Fine, first thing fixed. Um, other than the fact that these guys don't do anything. And that could be just the neighbor distance is small. Yeah, now they're all getting involved. Fine, so we'll leave it around eight for now. Um, reset, and then we're gonna go and turn off the contribution from cohesion, and we'll go and look at the contribution for alignment. Um, <laughs> they're all facing the same way, well that's good. Uh, we need something to perturb them a bit. Well, I suppose if I... Uh, I don't know. Let's turn, let's turn on cohesion again and see what they do. Ooh, that's really fucking with them. Look at that. That is not something they're liking. It's going really slow. Um, what if I put that at minus one? Okay, so maybe the... Oh no, but now they're all fucking off way away from each other, which is what you'd expect if you negate that. So um, let's just see what happens in alignment. All of these are normalized on the way out, which is interesting. Um, yeah. Once we calculate this final velocity, I'm actually tempted just to fucking um, normalize it again. So like just take this and then normalize and then multiply it by you know, some speed factor. Oh dear. Now they're all grouping in really nasty ways. Okay, let, let, let's worry about let's worry about this a little later. Details, details. Test one thing at a time. Um, not super happy with that alignment stuff. I must admit. Let's start the cohesion just so we get some directions, and then okay. <laughs> So we we start giving them some direction, some uh, velocity, and then we turn off the heat cohesion contribution, and now they're freaking out. Um, I wouldn't expect that much vibration, <laughs> unless I've really messed something up. So let's go and look at what I've messed up. We're going to sum all the velocities together. We're going to average them. We're going to... I don't know why we do this difference, actually. This confuses me a bit. That's way better. Um, I'm wondering if this bit was a mistake, and I think that's what Jay said earlier. 
And if you did, sir, well done. Because I think that might be it. Declare. Um, ah, fuck it. Just leave it for a second. Nah, because we're going to get that warning every time. Declare. Ignore void. Reset. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, cohesion. If we turn this on, now at least they shouldn't be fighting. They will go into groups, though, and... They will just sort off. Okay. It's interesting, though, is they get far enough away, and they, again, like... It kind of makes sense. They get far enough away, and then they're just gone. They're in their little flocks, and they fuck off forever. Maybe we'll have to put that clamping on the... on the region. Let's have a look anyway. So then the other one is separation. So if things are under a certain distance, they should separate. Um, and to do that, I guess we'll have to just turn up to 10 and yeah, 100. Not much separation going on there. Is there any other death var around? I'm really paranoid about that now. Just voids and void length. That's fine. Yeah, that'll do. Um, oh, of course, I haven't actually turned on this contribution yet. That's why. Idiot. So, turn this on. Okay, and they're all probably at least one away from each other. So let's turn this up to 10. And then we should start seeing them bugger off from each other. Okay. And if they get too close to each other, they should start staring away. All right, that starts to look a bit more sensible. And then they form little groups and they just sort off. I'm wondering if the cohesion distance should be higher. The neighbor distance rather. Let's set that up to, set that up to 15 and see what they do. It seems the velocity is just like they're getting enough velocity, like an escape velocity, essentially. And then they're off. <laughs> like all of them now, they're all gone. Huh. Not 100% I haven't screwed something up here, but we'll see. I'm really interested in what happens if I do that. It should go away really fast now. Yeah, that makes sense. Explosion! Right. Don't worry about that. That was just curiosity. What if I do just uh, normalize this? Just wondering if the velocity is clamped. If they won't start turning back in on themselves. They don't seem to. They seem quite happy just to bugger off forever. Jace is saying, I've always learned it's normalized instead of subtract, but the pseudocode does do subtract. Oh, okay, let's um <sighs> let's let's go back to the cohesion then. So they do. No, not the cohesion, sorry, the alignment, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so PJV, let's just take this ugly ass pseudocode from the past. And that is alignment, right? Trying to match velocity with other voids. Oh yeah. Woof. Okay. So, for each of the voids in the neighborhood, um, sum them together. So increment the sum, which is zero here, by the velocity of that void. Fine. Then we take the sum, and we divide it by the neighbors minus one. Whatever, close enough. And then we take 
The average velocity minus the velocity of my voids. They, they do that. And then he scales it, which we just normalize in that case, but... That flickering is just really weird. I see flickering like that, it just feels like something's backwards, you know? Saying that. Oh. Suddenly it's kind of behaving. Some of these are going to bugger off forever, but... In the group, at least, there is some stuff going on. Let's see if there's any of them turning around. So this guy is slowly pulling back in. Oh no, it's slowly getting bigger. Maybe it's just fucking up slower now. Interesting. Oh no, but yeah, if I've done the alignment backwards, then of course it's going to be exploding. Ah. It just feels like the alignment is dominating everything else. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, they just head off. <laughs> Maybe we will put that clamp in and uh, restrict it to a region. Yeah, the, um, the, the reason I shove that normalize on there is just because in the uh, pseudocode for that one, everything's about velocity and matching velocities and all this kind of stuff. But the... Like, okay, so I'll, I'll take this normalize out and see what happens. Um. Oh, yeah, maybe... Maybe that normalize was fucking with stuff. Hard to tell if it was just buggering off again. Yeah, everything's slowly aligning and then and heading off. Maybe if we... um. Get the separation up. Oh, the separation distance is ten. Separation distance is ten. That's quite high. What happens if we uh, reset and keep the separation distance low? Because that might be forcing them to um, get away the hell away from each other pretty violently. Um, and if they do that, then the alignment might end up taking over as a factor. Here we go. Now we're getting some clustering. Let's set the uh, distance up to four. And yeah, let's add that uh, position wrapping in so we can... Um... Yeah, maybe, right, maybe I'm just normalizing too early in all this stuff. What the hell? Oh, yeah. But that started to feel like a bit more of, you know, a bit more like some of the flocking that I've seen in the videos going on. Yeah, the Boyd itself is one of the neighbors in the um, other one. These are very close together considering the the separation distance was meant to be four. That feels weird there. Hmm. Okay, let's make it just truer to the actual, this pseudocode here, and then we'll start screwing with it. So, um, this one is now closer to the pseudocode, um, other than this scaling factor. We can put that in as well, why not? B3, S, so what was it? Um, oh yeah, it was divide, wasn't it? Um, leave that over there. What was the separation stuff? Um, try to keep a small distance away from each other. This is separation. Let's take this. Dump it in here. Change those tabs. 
comment it and let's see what I've screwed up. Separation. Okay, so we start with zero, fine. For each of the voids, we if the left if if it's not equal, so yeah, they do have the thing the, the thing as one of the neighbors. Um, yeah, let's do it then. Make stuff more true to the actual code. Oh yeah, otherwise, mm, no, anyway. Um, so this, for each of the neighbors, if it's not equal to the current one, okay, so now we have to have this test elsewhere. And not equal B to void. And the distance um, between the two is less than some separation distance, which we've got up here. Theirs is 100, ours is 4. Then um, this is minus... So we have the same logic. Rather than subtracting it's a, the, this b minus bj, we're doing add bj minus b, which should end up being the same if I'm right. Um, but screw it, we can uh, we can do it that way, and that's it. Then and we'll take out the normalize as well because we don't want that. So that's this. Oh, and I never did stick that in the, into a doc string, did I? Let's just do that quickly. Because I'm easily distracted. And what else? What else? Um... So we tweaked separation, we tweaked alignment. Cohesion still has a normalize in it, which won't be there, so. He just does divide by 100. I mean, we could do. <laughs> I'm just, I feel really weird about that one, though. They're just such arbitrary numbers. Like. But what we can do is we can do the clamping. So we want to set the position. What time are we at? Oh, so we can still got half an hour. I'm all right at where this is actually going now, seeing as they're looking like they're flocking a bit, which is kind of cool. Um, found box. Um, yeah, whatever, doesn't matter. Void. Um, 40, 40, oh no, 40, 0, 40, and... Forty, 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 something like that. And max. Actually, if we're just doing clamp, let's just make that destructive. Um, so we've already set the position. So let's do it. That's going to be the result. Set the position of void to be whatever result. Ah, okay, so then we are going to take the position of the void. Let's just call it boss. And then we are going to, what are we going to do? Um, we set the position to be, so it's each component really, isn't it? So. The new position is going to be the the range. So let's do range 
is max minus min. And it's going to be the x of the minimum plus mod um, x of the position plus the range. I think that's it. I might be completely talking out my ass there, but. Oops. Kind of just making it up, seeing as we're getting lowish on time. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, X of max. So wait a sec, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Oh, this just confuses me. Okay, so it would have been if max if it was zero. Um, I think I just talked out of my ass there, but let's have a look. The idea is that let's see, there's got to be some of them that are going low. So they're going through the floor. Oh no, they're going further away. So I got that wrong. Never mind. Oh man, I'm just not not getting it right now, am I? Okay, let's actually think rather than just coding blindly. So, the void has some x position. There's a minimum and a maximum. This is minus 5 and 5, and it's at whatever, 0. Um, if we. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, that's wrong. Um, What we can do is we can subtract the minimum from our current position and then we can just do mod the range. Okay, so this was this was com completely backwards. So it's x of min x. So then zero minus minus five will put it at five, and then we're modding with the range. That was the way around. And then it will wrap at 10 and then you add back again and hopefully or if I just put it off the come on you're all too damn slow now no nope, they're still going through zero damn it So the the y the y minimum down here. Oh wait a second. Ah, oh, I hadn't recompiled this function. This is getting a bit special. Right. Um, I'm just a nan machine right now. Yeah, I'm just getting normal number. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, where, where was I? Maximum, which is 40, 40, 40 minus minimum. Um, there we go. Mistake. All right, so this guy is going down, should end up at the top. See, there he is. Okay, right, that's wrapping now. Thank fuck for that.
It was a crazy person. So there's a little cluster forming up there, and there's a few of them migrating. Okay, let's look at the chat again, since I've been ignoring you folks for a couple of seconds. Um... Any dynamical system would only show chaotic behavior if you tweak the numbers right. Okie dokie, so maybe I'm just, uh, yeah. Maybe we need to do some tweaking. So they're all clumping together, which means the neighborhood is fairly large. So let's set it to five. Let's, let's tweak a few things then. Um, let's set the, and the separation distances, turn that down as well. Um, hopefully, what I want is I want to see a couple of groups appear. So yeah, now we're getting some more local clusters. <laughs> There's also a couple that were completely isolated. Yeah, well, these guys are buggering off. There they go. And then they'll disappear and appear over... Or the other side. Well, that's actually looking a bit better. Well, yeah. Thank you, Elevator Simulator, for the the, uh, the right poke. Okay, so it's twenty one thirty nine over here. <laughs> um. <laughs> Phil Fogg. Hey, I'm not sure I've seen you here before. If not, welcome. And Elevator Simulator is correcting my range thing. So let's have a look if I ended up with it right. Plus the minimum mod minus the position minimum by range. Thank you very much. You were correct. Uh, hey, we're actually... Oh, man, that's not looking... Wait a second. They're going fairly far. Oh, is... Oh, the whole... um. This whole area is, uh, what was it? I thought it was only 40 by 40. Oh yeah, it's 40 by 40, you dumbass. Okay, so, which means all of these 40s should actually have been 20s. There we go. And this camera's too slow as well. Oops, I just dumped an extra letter there. This camera's annoying me. One second. Okay, so when press W, um, multiply by Factor. Um, uh, factor B10. Oops. And when shift, it'll probably L shift, isn't it? Yeah. When shift is down, then set a factor to 20. Hopefully now I can move forward and then hold down shift to go a bit faster. Nice. Okay. Well, we've got some... These look like boards to me. Good enough. Nice. Yep, and we've got some flocks merging. Oh, I just gotta sit and watch this now. Actually, rather than have this over here, let's put it on here so I can finish my cold coffee and uh, listen to you folks. When the boys avoid object, perhaps uh, um, add boundary object rather than wrapping positions. Totally. I, I would much rather that because the bit I don't like about wrapping positions, obviously, as it goes off here, they're going to come in this side and then they interfere with other, um, other flocks. But other than that, that's all right, that is. I should have just followed the pseudocode a little better, but, you know, you read it and you go, I can, I can improve this. 
for comparison now, let's uh, see what Jace is uh, thinking. Whoops. I'm just going to watch this over on the other machine because I don't... Because I have no trust. Yeah, those guys are way faster. This is the Boyd's demo reel from 1987 that was linked. Oh, we could up we could increase that speed, of course. Um, or you can just hack it in for a start. But uh, because I'm actually normalizing this velocity at the moment, so it's artificially slowing them down. Um, you know. That's not changing their behavior much at all. Yeah, then they're, they're not they're definitely not as dynamic as the other ones, are they? Oh. Let's take that normalize out. Problem is now that we're gonna we're gonna have to clamp it at some speed, because um it's just gonna get silly otherwise. I won't bother giving them uh, pretty trails today. I'm just happy that they're actually behaving in some way that, you know, looks like they're interacting with each other and it's kind of boydish, even if it's not exactly right. Um, <laughs> Sorry that I'm indicating things uh, with my hands here. That's uh, because I'm a professional. Oh dear. Right, so. Yeah, I'm not sure what else there is to do now. Um... Obviously, it's going to be tweak values and see what kind of behaviors we can get. Um, but, like, <laughs> what else is there to do, he says. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's not fucking Half-Life, is it? But, I mean, like... Oh, well, thanks a lot, Shin. Lovely to have you here. <laughs> If, I mean, if this is really just not looking like anything close to some of some of the uh, some of the results I've seen have looked roughly like this. I haven't done a three D one before, so if if you believe that the um, the rules that we've got aren't correct, then please yell out uh, where to start, where we can start hacking on it. Because I want to obviously I, I want to learn how to make this better, and this is the, my first one, so I'm kind of okay with it. I'm just glad that, again, I'm seeing small clusters and then joining into bigger clusters and breaking away. That's kind of all right with that. It does look pretty different from the stuff in the video. I'm not sure if they're using the same rules. I'm not sure if they're using, like, it's hard to tell. Um, I, it feels like the alignment contribution is very high. So, I mean, we could turn this up for a start so they're not making as much effort to align with each other. We can see that behavior difference already. Um... Then they're going to form, again, possibly smaller groups. We can set the neighborhood distance up a bit. Um, or the... Yeah, we, we can tweak a number of these values. To, um... But again, throw out some things to tweak and I'm happy to tweak them. But I agree, it looks very different from the uh, ones in the video. But these do look like the rules that were in the original paper. And I'm not sure what the original... Like, was that video from the original paper? Probably was. Yeah, it would be sick. Actually, like, um... It would be fun to just make... Like, what is the factor for making something an enemy? Like, you probably want to throw the separation factor up really high when there's something like that. So, um... Oh, let's just put it dead in the center. Like, um... What time have we got now? Eh, not much time. 
but Do this, we'll whoops, make instance of enemy. Um, and then actually, we probably want to just treat that like another void. Um, as in adding it to the Boyd's list. So we can probably just do that. Maybe we can just make it a property of the Boyd that one of them is an enemy. Ah, we'll see. Right, so we don't need Velocity in it though because we're going to set its position directly. Maybe. Maybe not. See, I'd actually just like different rules. Like different um, factors. Like these uh, neighbor dist and separation dist. But like different ones so maybe we make that a property of the void and then the enemy can be a void with different ones of those i'm not too sure i will to see there are several steering behaviors which can act together at once avoidance seeking distance maintaining it is covered really well in the nature of code awesome yeah um you get complex behaviors by weighting the goals of each void that does sound very reasonable I mean, everything's the same right now, and we just pull those numbers out of our ass. Um, Melian, if I can just push the code to the repo. Very good point. Let's just take what we've got and uh, get it up there before I start hacking and breaking things. Right. Basic stuff. So it is up. Please play out. I'd love to see what you folks come up with. Um, Jace, you can also adjust the weights in update. You already have a spot for it. That's true. Yeah, again, we could uh, we can screw with those. So yeah, of course, yeah. So we can actually do. See, this is the thing. I don't like this weighting, as in, like in the pseudo code, he has eight here. She's just kind of strange. Like, I think I want to pull those out and put them in different properties. But, um, yeah, so where's... I actually want to rename this. So, uh, set align cohesion. Set align cohesion. Right, so we do the cohesion factor is like six all of a sudden. They're going to pull together a lot tighter. Alignment. Could be set high and then they'll try and straighten out similar directions. And the separation, we can set that factor to be higher as well. So when they start separating, it's harder than before. Yeah, I guess we'll just see. I think this is one of the kind of things that once you've got the basics set up, you can just play with it for fucking hours. But I'm kind of, I'm all right with where it got to tonight. This is, this is as much as I, I wanted to see anyway, which is just like, there is some behavior going on that could be mistaken for voids, if you're me. But again, still plenty of time for throwing out suggestions. Um, maybe even, uh, Medigan, it maybe even push the code to the repo now and then while you work on the session. That's a great idea. Actually, if someone wants to yell that during the streams in the future, like just... I'm not great at remembering that yet, but yeah, start training me. Just just uh, shout out. Straighten up and fly right. Oh, man. These are song lyrics I can understand from way in the past. Um, thanks, Pondipim. Right, let's see if there's anything I missed here. Yeah, and the steering as well, like the way we're doing it right now is just kind of jank. We're just adding velocities where really you might want to consider like the directions and then lerping or slurping, well, probably slurping between them in a much more sensible way. Right now we're just, we're just adding on and hoping that feels weird. And uh, I did look at one um, implementation in Unity, which was much more focused around 
um, yeah, exactly that, like slurping Quetonians and all this kind of stuff for the rotations. And it felt like a bit much to try and do in the stream. So I just went for Dirt Simple and we have Dirt Simple. They also seem uh, much too unidirectional. Agreed, yeah, it feels like the alignment is just way too strong. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll skip adding an enemy right now. I'll leave it as an exercise to everyone else, and probably me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, get some Count Bassy in there. Why not? Was that, or have I just... I, I opened that up for two seconds. Anyway. Any more for any more? Otherwise, I think I'll call it to a close early and we'll go off and get more coffee. I got a few minutes. Also, if anyone wants to shout out random Keppel questions, nothing related to all this jazz, then... Uh... Had some issues in episode 13 with... Uh... Max with more two arguments. So, yeah, Median, uh, the erosion stuff, because I never actually... Never never did get that working, did I? I'm going to have to revisit those. I just haven't had the... Uh, haven't had the desire, given how many issues we found, like, might be to do with the paper and might be to do with something else. It was... Uh, so, I, I would say maybe don't touch the erosion episodes for a while and we'll, we'll go, <laughs> go back to them. Um, STL! Yes, Barrett, I will, I will get there. Um, oh yeah, wait a second. Oh, Max taking multiple arguments. Hmm. Maybe I've... Let's have a quick check. Um, works Vario. Ah, that's why. <laughs> I haven't pushed some stuff. Uh, let's do that then. I think... Oh no, that's Max with... Yes. No, that sets things up so you can do max with multiple arguments. Uh, that's in master. I will get it tested and get it to um, release soon. So it should go out with the next quick lift release. Thank you, Median, for pointing that out. Otherwise, it would have sat there for a while. Cheers, Pompey Pimp. Um... And that's it. I think that'll do. Thank you so much for coming down. Um, thanks for helping me out as we uh, muddle through this. I'm not sure what I'll do next week. Probably not Boyd's. Um, like at the moment, I'm just interested in touching lots of small things and learning something each time. Um, I would... Uh... Oh, we've got questions coming in. Jace, uh, hey, what way would you go about generating GLSL? Um, well, I just use my little compiler so if that was the question is like i i just uh I, I write a a lisp vari and throw it through the compiler and get glsl out um and chimera has got glsl toolkit um if you want to actually pass uh glsl and it does do generation as well and merging and things like this oh those behaviors of the boys are going weird now we need some speed clamping on there as well it's all in the extension of the pseudocode, so I recommend people have a look at that. Um, also, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you could look at 3B. He's another one who has a Lisp to um, GLSL comp compiler. It's a lot more uh, direct. Is it the, the mapping between Lisp and uh, GLSL is a lot more direct. Uh, Vario, which is my um, attempt, has a lot more kind of Lisp niceties, like first-class functions and things like this. Uh, is there a good way to debug GLSL code? There are some tools pretty much only on Windows um, that allow you to capture a lot of data around that kind of stuff. Um, but no, like, um, <clears throat> well, there's a couple of things. You could also um, have a play around with the um, Mesa uh, reference GL implementation, uh, which can be quite useful for doing, um, yeah, CPU side compilation. It won't let you say it. Chimera's is correct in the not really. Like there's a, there's there are some tools, and I'm hoping to add some things to Keppel um, to allow capturing of data. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> Baron, we did little sonic booms for all these guys if they go much faster. 
absolutely oh man that'd be so cool there would just be more cones though wouldn't it like that that's the extent of my art right now is just ah primitive so it'll be a little white cone around the first one uh, which which should be enough to get Sh Shimera to insult it so it'll be fine uh the best way to code your stuff as list functions first unit test them and translate them to glsl uh yeah yeah that can be or yeah whatever you, whatever language you want to do it in if you're doing glsl directly then you know you might want something a little more c like but I just prefer messing around in Lisp. And I love the live recompile stuff. Um, the problem with outputting to texture shin, as I'm sure you already know, but I'll say it anyway, is just the the sheer amount of data you end up with. Um, it's, it's a daunting amount. I'd rather throw it into uh, texture and then have some kind of color picker tool that you can scrub across your, uh, your, um, your screen and print out those values. But, but yeah, I, I will I will look into doing some of the kind of GLSL tooling for debugging at some point. But I need to add uh, transform feedback buffers and things like that into Capital first, and then and then there's a lot of potential for doing some rather cool stuff. But that's all in time. But yeah, once again, thank you so much for coming down. Uh, it's been ace, and we'll pick something else small and doable for next week. So we can get a flavor of something else. I'm just going to keep on trying, trying to find like lots of little things to learn because I'm, I'm a complete noob at graphics programming, and as you can see, this kind of stuff. So we'll just keep on hacking away, and we'll we'll see what we end up with. <laughs> and the STL for yes, yes, and Patreon, uh, Ponder Pimp. I will get there. It will be done eventually, as this corporate juggernaut hurls forward into through time and space. Peace, folks. Thanks for coming down. Ciao.